have a coffee, though. Can We're you get... on, Gary. We're on. We're on already. Oh. Everybody's giving me bits and pieces. We're on, apparently. <laughs> That's good. First letter tonight, coming to... Travis! <laughs> Where are you going? Everybody's walking across the front of the camera. Should we do this again? No, they can see what we're like at home. It's a training program. We have a lot to teach the kids. First letter tonight. Melbourne is the most livable city in the world, apparently. Adelaide the fifth and Perth is the eighth most livable. Who measures this stuff? Not you blokes. I wouldn't trust you. Second letter tonight, my best friend is marrying this guy and I've always thought from the time that I met him that she could do much better, another interferer. Perth is full of those. So is the rest of Australia. And the last letter tonight, before we go back to our training exercise, is can I ever expect my kids to move out and fend for themselves like I did? I don't know. We're in a new age. We'll see what the panel's got to say. We've got the Lord Mayor. We've got Darren DeMel... Elise... And Peter, see you soon. What is going on? <laughs> Got a problem, big or small, would a miracle be nice? Our monthly crew is back, churning out advice. You might even laugh a bit in the following half hour. Park your backside on the couch, cause baby, it's time for Sweet and Sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. It's time for Sweet and Sour. And I'm supposed to wait a bit, Sophia keeps telling me. Good evening and welcome, everyone. Welcome to Sweet and Sour. Lovely to have your company here tonight. Gary Mitchell with you for another fun-filled half hour. Who have we got on the panel tonight? High Calibre, first up tonight, my favourite DJ. You allowed to call him that, Des? Uh, I think so. Calibre, I'm not so sure about. <laughs> I, I don't know that I want any kind of heavy weaponry references, please. <laughs> How are you, mate? Good, good. 6IX now? Uh, 6IX at the moment, yes. I listen uh, to you Sunday mornings. Uh, and still looking for a full-time gig. Oh. <laughs> Always take How the opportunity to How can they let your ta talent be unleashed at well, this point you know, in time? They have to knock somebody off. Is that how it works? Well, you know, I have been volunteering to make coffee. <laughs> Tried your coffee I probably tonight. shouldn't let yep, me. Yep, 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 yeah. yep. Try another. <laughs> have another one. No, it's really fine. I know it always does that to the cup. Elise, did Darren make your coffee tonight? No, I don't drink coffee, so I was safe. Oh, good for you. Welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me. It's wonderful to be here again. Tantra, not master, tantra I say practitioner, practitioner yes. We can and, be a master, I think, after maybe 30 years of doing and it. And Reiki. Yeah. Reiki master. And a bit of a journo as well. I was a journo, holistic life coach now, woman's empowerment coach, so working with women's spirituality and sexuality mainly. We should do the whole program on you. My goodness. We're when do you that. get time for anything? Living it, breathing it, it's how it is, isn't it? When you're passionate about what you do, it just becomes natural. And, so, and you were just telling me that you're opening up in Melbourne as well as opening up here in Perth. And yeah. That's a tough gig. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good luck. <laughs> Thank you. My Lord Mayor, welcome to the show. Thank you, Mr Mitchell. Long time between drinks. Very much so. How long ago were you last I think on? it was six or seven years ago. Really? Yeah. I'm glad I made such an impression that you invited <laughs> me back so quickly. <laughs> Lost your number, didn't know where to find it. <laughs> Have you enjoyed being our Lord Mayor? Are you enjoying being our Lord Absolutely. Mayor? Absolutely. No two days are ever the same in this amazing world. Of course. What's the best thing about the job? Look, I think it's hard to say. I really love the economic development. I love making people Australian citizens. I enjoy just meeting people. You're very good at your job. No, oh, I love it. I Thank speak you. to a lot of people because you know the associations the that I'm... Yes. They love you. Oh, thank you. And many people think you have been the best Lord Mayor we've ever had. There you go. Well, that's... Great, I'll long, go with long, that. Long, <laughs> you know, and the people that I yeah. speak to know the Lord Mayor's from 1887, so they know <laughs> what they're talking about. Yeah, quit while you're ahead there, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Pete. Hi, Gary. Welcome back to the show, sir. Fantastic to be here. How's everything in your realm of responsibility? Well, Western Australia is still a great place to live in. My area is a fantastic area to live in, and um, I'm enjoying getting out there and representing Good. the community, mate. Still the only man to have represented in both Victoria and Western Australia. That's right. Um, I got a transfer from Melbourne to Perth <laughs> and haven't looked back. Thanks to your gorgeous wife, who has also been on this show as well. Have you had a look at the letters for tonight? I Just, have. Yeah, I have and in a, a word, sneaky little look. In a word? Challenging. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Daz. You're on notice. You're first up. Here we go. Letter okay. one entitled Living It Up. Who measures this stuff? 
Melbourne is the most livable city in the world, apparently. Adelaide is the fifth most livable and Perth the eighth most livable. I lived in Perth for five years and found it horribly expensive. There you go, Lisa. I hope you're thinking about this one now. And even a little boring with not much of an arts community happen happening, but it had the best city beaches in Australia and a bright sky most of the time. In Melbourne, where I also lived for five years, I had the capacity to keep busy or distracted more to the point, but froze there experiencing almost nine months of winter and three months of summer every year with no local beaches to easily access. I found myself swallowed by suburbia in Melbourne if I wasn't out spending money and avoiding the cold and rain. After two years, in, uh, after two years I found Adelaide at best quaint but horribly closed and parochial. Now, I've never been canvassed about how I feel about the city I live in. I have a million suggestions on how to improve on what we have, and I'm sure we all do. So here's my question to the panellists. What's, uh, what's both wrong and right with the city you live in, and what does it need right now to make it more livable? I'm moving back to Perth early next year, so have things changed, or will I have to spend all my weekends at the beach again? It comes to us from Maggie of Prospect in South Australia. Daz, what's... what's how do you find Perth? It's all about opinions, isn't it, really? Because um, it, it, it depends on the time of life that you're in as to, you know, where something may be a positive at one stage may no longer be. There are people who may decide that a busy arts community would turn them off of being in a place, and there are people that would look twice at a city beach and go, you know, probably not. For me, I love Perth. I've, you know, I've lived here all of my life, pretty much. Um, me too. I have spent time other places. I love the fact that from Melbourne as an example, you could get baklava at 10 o'clock at night. You could go, you could get, you, you know, you could get a dim sum and baklava and all sorts of amazing foods at Daz, 10, 11 o'clock at I night. I live in Perth, I can get baklava at 10 o'clock at well, night. But you have see, to go to my mum's place. That's ah, <laughs> this is the trick, see, you can't necessarily get it street side. Well, at, yeah, that would possibly be the kind of movement that I would encourage. But then again, I have a three-year-old, we don't get out very often. So even if there was baklava available, I this is the thing. <laughs> this is where your life changes. So what would I look for more of? Well, definitely not more toll roads. Um, I like the fact that when it comes to Perth versus Melbourne and other places, we don't have to pay quite as much to get around town. So I like it as it is. I'll go with the development as it goes. Good for you, Elise. I think every city or every place you live in has its own charm. So perhaps also a perspective. And, and like you said, it depends what stage of your life you're at. And the other thing is, it's, it's also perhaps your desire to come back here. Maybe that's a calling. Maybe Perth has something to show you that you weren't open to before. So come back with open arms and an open heart and see what the city has to offer you this time around. I think you might be pleasantly surprised. Mm. She is a beautiful diamond, our city in I, Perth. I know plenty of people who disappear from Perth and can't wait to get back to it after they've been there for a while. I've done that. I've come back. Did I've you? spent most of my 20s living abroad in Europe and Asia and it made me fall in love with Australia coming back again. And now, the perspective of Perth's <laughs> Lord Mayor. <laughs> well, Maggie, I think you're the one with the problem, girlfriend. I mean, there is just no pleasing you. I mean, you've lived in three cities and you're bagging them all. I have to say, as a very proud Perth-born woman, that uh, Perth's time has really arrived. And I think you need to come back here in a hurry because you're going to be very pleasantly surprised. I think there is a lot on offer and really it comes down to your attitude because there is something for everybody and uh, life is what you make of it so you need to get back over here and Gary and I'll show you around yeah just I'll give you my phone number at the end of it all right <laughs> Pete now how many years have you lived in Perth five and a half years five Gary. and a half years after yeah. spending all of your life in Melbourne 40 something years yeah yeah yep, yep. how do you find it well I choose to live here and I choose to stay here which is saying something so these Perth people they're always going to be a bit biased towards Perth but I've lived in other places and I can tell you this is a great place to live Maggie um, you should come over here, forget about the past. It seems like you're talking about a distant past and have a look at Perth today. We've got a vibrant city, vibrant suburbs, lots of things to do on the outskirts of Perth. A great Lord Mayor keeping the centre of the city pumping along. A government that's been putting in a lot of investment into the state. But most importantly, we have wonderful people doing creative things, great things. You want baklava at 10 o'clock at night? Um, you can Daz, me in the right direction. I'll take you down the street. We Brilliant. only have to go about 100 metres down the street to get baklava 24 hours a day. Brilliant. And right. we don't have to go to Gary's mum because <laughs> she probably wants to sleep at that time. Oh, she's got the kettle on already. Pete. But um, Maggie, take it from someone who moved here, chooses to live here, 
Forget about Melbourne, forget about Adelaide, forget about the other cities. Perth's the place to be. Come here, you won't be disappointed. We love it. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about interfering with your best friend's love affair. Don't go away. More of Sweet and Sour. I love Perth. Back to Sweet and Sour. Now, if you'd like to send us a letter and have it discussed by the panel, not necessarily this panel, but subsequent panels, send us a letter and address it to an email, letters at sweetandsour.net.au, and you can have a look at our website as well, which is sweetandsour.net.au. You can give us a like on Facebook, a tweet at Twitter, you can see all of those accounts there, and you can even have a look at some backstage photos on our Instagram account. There it is. And for everyone who does send us a letter, we're going to send you to the movies, courtesy of Natalie Cameron and NRC Communications. There it is, me and Earl and the dying girl. Hmm, does anybody know anything about that? Is yes, it? we like it. We saw it on the plane coming is back. Is Earl the cat? There's a cat in that picture, I just want to know. When... I I'm didn't really see it, I don't know. No, thank you, Nat. <laughs> we go. Yeah. Letter two. Hi, sweet and sour. My best friend is marrying this guy, and I've always thought from time, from the time that I met him, that she could do much better. I'm very close with her family, family, and I know her entire family believes the same thing as me. In the last year, my best friend and her fiance started using drugs. At the same time, I experimented too, but that was only for a very short time, perhaps longer than I should have. But I decided it wasn't for me and stepped away from using. Since that time, I've been seeing them less and less. Recently, I caught up with her parents and they asked me if her fiancé was doing drugs. I said no, knowing that in reality they both were. I've regretted saying this from the moment it came out of my mouth. I'm stuck now as to whether I should try uh, and help them both to, uh, quit as it's getting out of control. If I tell her parents the whole situation may explode, including the wedding. So, do I sit back and watch my friend permanently commit to this toxic relationship? Or do I open my mouth to her, to, to them both, or just to the parents? What do I do? Now, so you don't think I have other intentions, I have to tell you that I'm gay, and the only reason that I am close, at all close to her fiancé, is simply because she is my best friend. I'm stuck in the middle, thinking that I have some responsibility, and I feel incredible regret for lying to her parents when at the time I felt I was protecting her. What if things keep getting worse or it escalates and costs someone, th someone their life? Mm, melodrama. Thoughts, please, Campbell of Northcote in Victoria. Pete, straight to you, sir. Drama. Campbell, yeah, drama, and you're right in the middle of it. Um, almost anything you do is likely to have you cast as the bad guy. On one side mm. of things, it's your friend's life, your friend's making the choices, you might not like them, but let your friend go ahead with it. If you interfere, tell her parents, chances are she'll blame you at some point, you'll be, you'll be the fall guy, you'll be the bad guy in all this. That's one side of it. But the other side of it is, it sounds like you've lost your friend anyway, and you've lost your friend mm. to something pretty horrible in our society, and that's drugs. So if you really, if this is your friend, and you really care about them, you've got to forget about the possibility that you might lose a relationship Focus on that last bit that you said, it might escalate, you might lose your friend permanently. I think you've got an obligation here, protect your friend, uh, let the parents know, and then whatever happens, happens after that. Lise, you don't have to deal with issues like this at council, do you? No, but it's a really <laughs> interesting letter. Campbell, I think you're a very decent person, and my advice is similar to Peter's in as much as I would say, try and help them both get off the drugs. The relationship is really not your business, but I think it's really important as a fellow human to help someone get off drug addiction. It's a very sad blight upon our society today. But uh, yeah, you know, these are one of those things in life. We have friends whose relationships we might not agree with, but until you're in that relationship, you don't know what they've got going on. So I really think that side of it is not your call. It's a tough 
um, gig to get off drugs too, and he's mm. done it. So he dis does have some good experience to offer. Elise, mm, what do you heart, do here? My heart does go out to you, Campbell. I really feel that you are quite torn. You obviously care about your, your best friend really dearly. Maybe you need to get some perspective, step back a little bit, sit with yourself, create some silent space, meditate perhaps, and see what feels right. Really come from your heart. What do you feel is the right thing to do here? Do you need to speak to her parents about it? Do you need to really just try and sit down and have a chat with her? Perhaps you need to step back entirely and let her sort this out. A best friend is someone that, that plays a role in your life as support. So if you want to play that role of support, then step up and really do what you feel is going to help her. This isn't about you, this isn't about the relationship anymore. It's about your friend if you want to save her, if you feel this really is the detriment of her health more than anything else. Come on in, Des. If you want to be unpopular, uh, then leap on in and start suggesting things that you should do. Um, in the situation where the parents ask you something, you're already going to lie, so just say, I don't know, in that situation, and deal with your friend. The drugs aren't the cool thing, the drugs aren't the... Uh, the, 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 the everyone said it, the drugs are the thing that you really want to try and work with your friend around for whatever consequence, whether it means the end of the relationship or whatever. But don't go in there and try and talk to parents about relationships because that's just a recipe for no friends for the rest of your life. Yeah, deal with the drug thing. Yeah. Deal with the thing that you can. Work with your friend. And I'm with Pete actually. I think if you're going to open your mouth about the relationship, you're gone anyway. Step up. When we come back, we're going to be talking about how to move kids out of your home <laughs> when they're no longer welcome. <laughs> but it's a tough gig now. Kids can't move out. When we come back, more of Sweet and Sour. Don't go away. A sweet and sour resident just of the peace, that's certified. Welcome back, here we go, straight into it. Can I ever expect my kids to move out and fend for themselves like I did? Well, my 23-year-old is still with me even though he'd like to move out soon when he can afford it. Surely this is the hardest time to be alive and living in this country, which is not so lucky anymore. Rents and property prices are horribly unrealistic. Looking at things overall, whilst, whilst we've become a commercially successful nation and plugged into all the super technologies, aren't kids facing a much tougher life than we ever had in the past? I grew up with very few things that felt I had an abundance. I also had very few stresses. Now I look at today's kids who have everything, but also have more stresses than they should. And it doesn't look like it gets better for them as they get older. With more money around, why is it so much harder today for kids, or is it simply all in my imagination? Elise, what are we doing? What are we Throw doing wrong? Throw me in first. Well, number one, it seems like we're, we're making this a negative thing, like a stress, which is unnecessary. Why does it have to be a stressful thing? I think it's your mind frame. So let's peel it back and maybe start the conversation before they're even moving out of home. Think about how you can bring up planning with your finances, maybe investing in some secondhand furniture, how to do your own taxes. Give them some practical life skills as they're growing up. It's not so daunting when they move out of home. Kids and the are learning thing, about taxes at the age of what? Maybe in their early 20s when what? they start a job. I mean, isn't this a practical okay. skill that we all need to know? Yeah. And okay. the other thing is, there's emotional support as well. Wait, hang as on. a parent. Were you interested in learning about taxes when you were 20? Well, the fact that I was going to get some money back, yes, it was rather fabulous. Yeah, and also, I felt that I needed to take wow. charge of my life. I had a this little business. Right I don't even care about taxes now. <laughs> it's not that I care about the taxes, it's an understanding of the process. This I is know. how it is. This is the world we live in. We need to have an understanding yeah. of the world we live in. So, it's, so let's step up, no so matter what age we're easier at. easier for the people who made a commitment to step up and deal with life. What about the rest of us? Do you know what? I reckon... Time to grow up. Oh, boo. The, the, goal point, the goalposts move and it's just what the situation is and your kids will adapt. My son, they do. They don't notice the difference because no, they never experienced that's right. the I have, I had no difference. I had no comparison. Like My parents could pay off a house in five years. That was the standard expectation. I'm not under that expectation. I have no belief that I'd likely pay off a house But in you're five aware years. of that. How does that make you feel, that they did it like that? I just like want to that? punch them, mostly. <laughs> you know, I mean, metaphorically speaking, obviously. It, like, it annoys me a little bit, but it's like, oh, well, you can't begrudge that. Maybe they'll leave me something. Probably not after what I've just said. <laughs> um, when it comes down to it, like, my son is better with an iPad than I am, so he'll work out how to survive in a weird economical environment. And that's, or, they'll just learn. Or he'll live in a tent. You adapt or die. Not everyone yeah. buys houses now. No. Look at Airbnb. You can travel the world just, you know, living in someone else's what place. What is it? Airbnb. Airbnb. What's Airbnb? It's a 
it's like you can rent someone's house or rent their studio, rent their apartment, and, and oh. you get a sea change essentially. And that's where people throw parties and trash them, isn't it? Normally. Well, no, no, you have to pay. Well, there are occasions of but that. To have access to pay. Airbnb, Gary, you have to learn how to use that iPad. <laughs> <laughs> what makes you think I can't, Pete? <laughs> I'll send my son around to help you. Can, can I butt in here? To you can butt in, sir. Um, look, first of all, I, I think you're under a heap of misapprehensions. The first one is that you call your 23-year-old a kid. That is an adult who's mooching off you, okay? <laughs> get on get on with the program. <laughs> and you think these young people have got it tough. Pete, how old is your eldest? Out. My oldest is 21. Fend for um, themselves? I, for a long, long time, mate. <laughs> and they fend for themselves. <laughs> They've each got two jobs, the older ones. And I'll tell you what. I'll tell you when I was 23 and I moved out of home, unemployment was at 13%. Ooh. Home loan interest rates were at 17 and a half percent and there were no odd jobs late at night and on the weekends because we were nine to five towns and we shut at one o'clock on a Saturday. This world that we are living in today is the wealthiest, happiest world ever and our living standards and our life expectancy shows that. Take a leaf out of Elisa's book grab life by the horns and live it. Have realistic expectations at 23. You're not going to live in a five by three house with four parking spots in the best suburb in Perth. But have some realistic expectations. Go out there, work for it, and the world is still your oyster. The world Beautiful. is still your oyster, Lise. Mm -hmm. Totally agree with Peter. I think it's really all attitudinal. And, you know, you only really know your own generation. You're putting your thought patterns onto them and they've got to make it themselves. And I think it comes down to work ethic and your belief in your ability. And if you have good core values and a great work ethic, you can be a success. And it's about persistence and resilience. And as to them sort of still living in the house, I think you need to give them a bit of a kick. At least they need to be getting some jobs and paying board or somehow sort of sharing the load. But I really do think it's quite unfair and unrealistic of you to say that, you know, the times we're living in now are really not as good as we believe they are. Oh, do you like this letter to give away the pair of limited edition sunglasses? No. Courtesy Nothing of, of this yeah. person. Hello, come on. <laughs> and the Opticals, Daz doesn't. I don't think do you so. you like this one? Which one do you like? No, no. I, I would give it to the city one tonight. Oh, to the, of course oh. you would. Mm. The I city. Pete, do you city like the city enough. one? I like the city one. I also like Campbell's letter. I'm um, a Campbell yeah, well. I, I Campbell. think I agree. I think, ma'am. from Genuine Heart. You can't outvote the Lord Mayor. I think you just have to outvote him. We're doing it by kindness. What are you doing? We're so doing it by consensus. You can handle it. She's a tough broad. She can handle it. Coming out to Campbell of, where's Campbell situated? Northcote, Victoria. Do you know that suburb, Pete? Northcote. Northcote. they call it. Sorry, I've been corrected. Northcote. Yeah. And where's that in relation to Paran? Just north of the city and not Is far it? from the great suburb of Collingwood. <laughs> Yeah. Mad Collingwood supporter. Yeah. Oh, can we, is there any way we're going to be able to convert you to uh, the Eagles or the Dockers or uh, no what about a chance team? in the world? No chance. Uh, what about a? You surely you convert to a waffle team out of this? Oh, West Perth. There you go. West yeah. Perth. Northern suburbs. Garland, the Northern Do we really suburbs need of football? Perth. There's more, more to Australia than football. We've got to go. <laughs> Des, terrific to have you on the panel, mate. Lovely to be back. We'll and see you again soon, please. Hopefully with something different in the byline underneath. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. All right, Elise. When are you going to Melbourne? I'm going in October. I'll be there for all of October. Mm, me too. We're going to have a coffee there. No, we won't have coffee. What, what are we going to have? We'll have organic tea. <laughs> I'm busy that weekend. <laughs> Please, terrific to have you back. Thank you. And let's stop comparing to Melbourne, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't need to. We're good. Pete? Gary, Terrific to have you, mate, as fantastic always. to be here. See you soon. Yeah, very soon. All right, mate. Say hello to your good missus as well. I will do. Thank all of our wonderful panellists. Thank our terrific yeah. crew. And thanks for having us at Home Tonight Australia. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Good night. This is where you wave. wave. This is where you wave. <laughs>